What everyone doesn't really know is that he was so overconfident of winning that fight that he took Bo so lightly that according to his former trainers, Ruth Hoover and Georgie Benton, on a scale of 10, his preparation for that fight was a seven. They had difficulty getting him to spar. They had difficulty getting him in the gym. And that is so uncharacteristic of what we feel about him that it's more amazing how he fought in that fight. I mean, when I heard that, I thought, gee, this is like uh, Rush Limbaugh and Howard Stern taking a vow of silence that Ernie, that Holyfield wouldn't be in the gym. And of course, Larry Merchant mentioned that Lou Duva and George Benton are now the former trainers of Evander Holyfield. He enters the ring with his new co-manager, Hammer, and behind him, the new trainer, Emmanuel Stewart. For so long, such a familiar face in the sport, trainer of many terrific fighters out of his Kronk Gymnasium in Detroit, most notably Thomas Hitman Hearns, who scored a one-round knockout over Andrew Maynard on the undercard here. Here is a look at the record for Evander Holyfield. 29 wins, the one loss to Riddick Bowe, 22 KOs, but since winning the heavyweight championship against Buster Douglas October 25, 1990, Holyfield has fought 55 rounds and produced only one knockdown in those 55 rounds. That was in the title defense against Burt Cooper in his home run in the future as heavyweight champion. Of course, Evander Holyfield would like to knock a few thousand square feet off that floor plan. The way he's bundled up, it looks like he's he's coming up to the mark for the downhill skiing championship at the Olympics. It is chilly here. <laughs> Championship belts enter the ring ahead of Bo. Already in the ring is ubiquitous manager Rock Newman. There is the 80-plus-year-old trainer, Eddie Butch, the sport's most celebrated octogenarian, the man whom Bo calls Papa Smurf. And here is the record for Riddick Bo, unbeaten to this point in his career. 34 wins, 29 knockouts, one of the five decisions, of course, the 12-round unanimous decision over Evander Holyfield 51 weeks ago tonight. Here's what happened. The challenger, the former champion, Evander Holyfield. Evander Holyfield weighs in at 217 pounds. Next up on the scale, the man who holds the WBA and IBF World Championships, Riddick Bowe. 246. He weighs in at 246 pounds. So both fighters come to the ring considerably heavier than was the case here a year ago. And a three and a half inch reach advantage over Evander Holyfield. Watching that tape and this tail of the tape, you wonder whether Evander Holyfield is going to try to get to that new soft underbelly of the champion. And, and now, ladies and gentlemen, from the site where legends are made, Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, let's get ready to for the heavyweight championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the gold trunks with black trim and weighing 217 pounds. This 1984 Olympic medalist has a professional record of 29 and one with 22 KOs. He is a former two-time undisputed world champion in two different divisions. Ladies and gentlemen, from Atlanta, Georgia, the challenger and former heavyweight champion of the world, Evander Hill, Hill, Holy Hill. <laughs> oh, 
And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing the white trunks with red trim, and weighing in at 246 pounds. He's also an Olympic medalist, winning super heavyweight silver in 1988. Since turning professional, his record is a perfect 34 and 0, 29 by knockout victory. And tonight, he defends his title for the third time. Ladies and gentlemen, from Brooklyn, New York, presenting the undefeated heavyweight champion of the world, Ready? Big Daddy Bo! Okay, now, Eddie, Eddie, I want to tell you, if he goes right here, I'm not going to call it low, but it's going to be all right. Fair enough? All right, now, we, this, this is with the championship of the world. We've already gone through all the instructions one time. I expect a tough, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Any questions from the challenger? Any questions from the champion? Let's get it on. Jim, the only sequels I can think of that live up to the originals were Ali Fraser three and Godfather two, but everybody is here hoping this fight can live up to the original. It's asking an awful lot. If it's even half as good, it will be, as 1993 goes, a memorable fight. One thing I gotta tell you that's a pleasure for me about this, as Bo comes Holyfield with two overhand rights to start the fight. The George Foreman, a heavyweight championship fight. Bo, all the action so far, and there's a hard right. Bo should never try to waste that kind of energy on a fighter like Evander Holyfield, who recovers. He gets hurt, but he recovers too much. Bo came in looking as though he was thinking first round knockout. A lot of right hands, one of them to the body, several to the head, and now Evander has weathered that early storm. And you can get a first round knockout, but you got to do it properly. You got to set it up with Evander Holyfield. You don't disrespect a guy who doesn't believe in his heart. He lost the first fight anyway. The first time Bo fought Holyfield, he was really proud of his body. This time, he's got his trunks way above his waist. He's, he's a lot to be ashamed of, so he's not... He's trying to get this thing over with as quick as he can to compensate for his lack of uh, happiness with himself physically. It's more than just the extra 11 pounds. He looks softer all over, right, George? Yeah, he is not proud of his body tonight. That You don't want that in a young fighter. Holyfield steps in with a left to the side of the head and a right to the chest. Bo lands a jab and a right hand. Holyfield claimed he would box, said that he would stick the jab. Already, Bo has tried to lure him into a bit of a war. Rick Bo has made the awful mistake of going out there at that kind of weight, wasting that much energy too quick. Could it just made him. the first round tougher for him. Yeah. He should forget they've ever fought before and go out there and set it all up with the left jab, win this fight on a great defense. I don't know what's happened. Who gave him the advice to try to knock Holyfield out in one round? George, I thought that he thought he hurt Holyfield early and he wanted to jump on him, and then he found out that he really hadn't hurt him, and he stepped back, and now he's boxing again. Yeah. No, he really planned on getting out there and knocking this guy out in the first round. This Jesse Ferguson thing gave him a false sense of security. You may be right. Trading punches at center ring. Holyfield ending the exchange there. And as both men conserve energy a little bit, the point I wanted to make, George, two relatively clean livers, both of them serious, devoted fathers, both of them the kind of people who treat reporters like us with respect and courtesy. It's hard to root against either of these two guys. If you gotta wonder, Riddick Bo, we're talking about clean living, he's eating a lot of lot more pork chops than Evander Holyfield, spare ribs and everything. Well, pork is cleaner than a lot of other stuff, but you make a good point. It's not so much the pork, it's just that he eats a lot. Steaks, too. Okay. Uh, 
and when he starts setting your man up with the jab. Double the jab. He's counting on every jab you throw. Double your jab. Faint and stick. Either faint and stick or double the jab. And keep the pressure. Keep trying to keep the pressure on it. Okay. Your timing is beautiful. Just keep working the rhythm. And when you get through with your punches, drop to the inside. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Push him. Get your leverage where you can use that strength. Push the big ball back. Don't put too much around. No, you don't want too much around that ass. Let's see where early on Bo thought he had him hurt. What Bo is trying to do is to, to let Holyfield know he's not going to let him box. And he thought he had him hurt here, and he came out to put some intimidation on him, perhaps. What Holyfield has to do is to land something important so that Bo doesn't get so reckless and gives him the room to fight his fight. Holyfield has already established to Bo, this is gonna be a long night, buddy, and you're gonna get yourself a nice little whipping. You may beat me, but you're gonna get ripped. Well, but after all the talk of boxing, Holyfield came out and threw a total of four jabs in round number one. So he is back to the warrior mentality we've seen in the past. He did a lot of uh, retreating, which was good. Now his boat is back on track. He's using his jab, standing on the ball, got his balance real good. Starting to blow his nose a little too early. He can swell up real easy. Bo sticking the jab. You notice, George, they use the end swell under both of Bo's eyes between rounds. Holyfield lands a right and takes one in return. But believe me, Bo got the worst of that exchange. Mills Lane warning Bo about holding and hitting. Jabbing. Everything he does, he, he moves first and then he retreats good afterwards. Left hook landed for Holyfield. Bo was wide open for it and he dropped the right hand. Holyfield moves to the right and left and then hits and then he moves out of the way. And now Evander starts to stick the jab with regularity. And Bo seems a bit befuddled by that. Reaching out with his right hand because the Vander Holyfield is not there like he was the first time. This round started well for Riddick Bowe, but it appears in danger of ending badly for the champion. Now, now he sticks the jab again. Evander Holyfield is setting things up for a good right hand. He's jabbing to the body to get this guy conscious of a body punch, and he's intending to drop him with a right hand. And another left hook landed flush for Holyfield. And now Bo tries to show off his infighting skills. One of the big weapons in Bo's arsenal, he is regarded as a great infighter, particularly for a big man. Holyfield is counting on a counter right hand. If he catches Bo, he's going to drop him. Bo should just stick, stick with his left jab until the four or five rounds and open up with the right hand later. That was Bo who landed the right hand. That one missed a little short. jab once in a while instead of before you throw it. See? Paint, paint a lot, because he's a little tight. He'll react. Break on off, okay? Because so mm -hmm. you get him tired, then you're going to turn it on going down the stretch, okay? Okay. All right, you're looking good, fighting Third a perfect round. fight. Vaseline, man. You... No, he don't need too much. He don't like too much Vaseline. Uh -huh. The jab. Right hand, come up, come back to get up to it. Keep your hands up. He'll start leading with right hands now. Uh -huh. Every time you shoot that right hand roll a counter, but you look at beautiful. Hey! Yeah. Yeah. Evander Holyfield has said that a race car, good race car, doesn't need a new engine. It just needs to be tuned up a little differently sometimes. So far, he has tuned up for this fight differently than the first one. 
It's kind of weird after all these years to go to Evander's corner and listen to Emmanuel Stewart instead of George Benton and Lou Duva. Right hand over the top by Bo. I'm reminded of the phrase that Howie Long used to describe playing against Marcus Allen, like watching your wife cook in someone else's kitchen. <laughs> Little boy of Alon Holyfield to move around on his feet a little too much. He should try to disrupt that. How, George? Well, he's letting him bounce and get relaxed out there. What you got to do is put the pressure on him, make him fight, make him fight without fighting himself with this jail. Good right to the body. That was good by Riddick Bowe. By Bo, Excellent right to the body. You see, Holyfield is so relaxed out there, you can't let him just keep doing that bounce, move, bounce, move. You pick a fight with him and then make him stand still. Riddick faking the right and Bo flinching away. Or check it, Holyfield flinching away, I should say. Jab landed twice. Right hand wasn't there. That time the right caught leather from Holyfield's glove. Holyfield pawing with the jab now and lands a right hand in close. And if Holyfield continues to land those pecky right hands, it'd be of an, an advantage to him as the fight go on. Bo has got big eyes, and they seem to swell up easy. Shouldn't try to land a heavy shot, not too soon. Riddick not looking assertive in round three. We're getting to double up on the jab, taking a left there and complaining to Mills Lane that Holyfield had tried to glove him in the eye. It is Evander who throws combinations. Bo throwing one punch at a time. Evander Holyfield is the best combination fighter of the two. Bo is a better right hand shot, but Bo Holyfield is the best combination fighter. And things are going well for Holyfield at this point. Now Bo is picking up his jab. He can win this fight with a jab if he so chooses. If he remembers to double and triple up with it. Because every time he throws just one jab, Holyfield looks to counter over the top, George. The thing about it, Holyfield has not landed one good left hook to the body yet. And if he starts landing that left hook to the body, that right hand is going to come a lot easier for Evander Holyfield. He's got to remember to throw it there first. He's yeah, been he, doing a lot of head hunting. Yeah. Right hand by Bo. And it hurt for the fight so far. It hurt Evander. That right hand hurt. Getting to slow down now. Yeah, I see. Yes. <laughs> Keep that stick going. Keep that stick going. When you get him near the ropes, uh -huh. up to you to hook and cross. Now here's where Bro will complain of a thumb right there. You really can't see the thumb. That was with these no gloves. Thumb. There, there didn't seem to be any. He complained also, if you may recall, in the first fight. That looked like a clean left hook. All the way. Later in the round, some good inside shots by Bo. Bo is an extremely well-schooled, polished big man. I don't think I've ever seen a big man as polished as Bo is. And you see the statistical edges for Bo through round three in punch count numbers. But it is Holyfield who has been more vigorous, more energetic, throwing more combinations. Bo getting more accurate now as time goes on. Here comes the clowning I told you about. Holyfield starting to go to the body. Bo comes upstairs, lands a left hook. Remember, he punctuated round three with a terrific right cross. Because Riddick Bo decides to clown with a, with a real Olympic champion. You just can't clown with certain guys. Left hook by Holyfield. Bo going to the body. Action reminiscent of round 10 in the first fight. One of the great rounds in the recent history of boxing. In the first fight, Riddick Bo was so thin that his hands just moved by themselves. This time, he's got to do so much with so much effort. So little with so much effort. Holyfield leaping in and taking a right to the body and That's an uppercut shot. and a right hand over the top. That's the shot that Evander can't take is that uppercut of bowl. 
When Evander leans in like this, he is susceptible to that uppercut. That's toward... right. That can, that's the bread and butter punch for Riddick Bowe is that uppercut. They trade Leather at close quarters. Holyfield trying to remember to go to the body. He better remember to get out of there. He got too many rounds left to start mixing it up with the big guy. You don't want to go shoulder to shoulder with Riddick Bowe. He is too sharp and has too many weapons inside. And not only that, as he leans on you with that 246, 50 pounds, really, it starts to wear those thin legs of Evander Holyfield down. That's a strategy you understand pretty well, huh? Yeah, you, you, you lean on him and you keep leaning and the thin legs can't take it. And I think Riddick Bowe is anything but polished. He hasn't thrown one good straight right hand yet. So you and Larry have a disagreement here about yeah, those Yeah, everything techniques. is under and on top and slap. If he throws a right hand, throws straight right hand, he'd drop Evander Holyfield right now. Tried to do it there, but missed. He just haven't gotten one straight shot going. I'll agree with one thing with you, George, though. He can win the fight with the jab if That's he sticks all. with it. And a straight right hand, but everything is slapped onside the jaw. Abrasion above the left eye of Riddick Bowe. There may be blood beginning to emerge from Bowe's left eye. Holyfield lands a right right on the target. hand for Holyfield. And they swing and swing after the bell. And look at this. Hey, these guys want to fight. <laughs> I've never seen anything like that. <coughs> and there is blood above Bo's left eye, gentlemen. And a cut in the middle of his head as well. Two cuts. Two cuts. All right. Okay. Got to get under those counter shots. Well, this is either the end of the, this is either the end of the fourth round or the start of the fifth. Take your pick. I've never seen so many blows landed after a bell. Have you, George? Not many, and but most were all slaps. <laughs> it's a real good slap match at this time, and that's why there's going to be a lot of cuts. One thing it did is to limit the amount of time that Bo's corner had to work on his two cuts above the left eye and in the center of the brow, right between the eyes. They've got a real good cut man, though. In the fourth round, Evander Holyfield took 70 shots at Riddick Bowe and landed 43 of them. 61% connect percentage. Evander's got to be real careful and not to work, try to work on that cut. Just continue to box. And round four was a 90 punch round for Bowe, who seems a little out of gas now as the fifth begins. Just came in a little too big around the midsection for that kind of fighter. He doesn't have a good straight punch. He wings on top and it burns you out too quick. And that cut in the middle of the brow is gonna bleed, George. It could affect his vision as time goes on. This is the time you go back to school. Use your left jab, forget about a knockout. Use your left jab. He could win it with his left jab. I don't know why they didn't tell him that. He's becoming an easy target for Holyfield as the trickle of blood begins to bother him. But he still has this good big right hand if he can ever make it go straight. Now Holyfield cut Alex Stewart in the first round of their fight on June 26th. And after that became a less effective fighter as he tried to target the cut. That's there true. he lands a right hand and Bo comes back with a right and a left. But Bo is doing all of his stuff real close. He's ineffective. He's got to keep this man on the outside of his shots. He can do something. When they are in close, oh, he's got this right uppercut that he just refuses to use. We've never seen Riddick Bowe cut like this. It'll be interesting to see what they can do between rounds five and six. Do you think they can stop that bleeding, George? Not at all. It's in the places where you just can't stop them. The, the jab just bounces off the side of your nose and in the middle of your face. You just can't stop cuts when they get in that area. Short left hand stuns Holyfield and knocks him back. 
Evander recovers rapidly, as he always has. I think the big mistake was to allow Bo to go through with this fight in that kind of condition. Overconfidence will always happen with the young guy. Did it happen to you, George, when you were young? Yeah, with Muhammad Ali, I wasn't in shape, but I said, I can whip this old guy. Bo made me hurt. He is hurt. Bo is hurt. Holyfield gunning for a stoppage here. It would shock the world. Stuns Bo again. And the round comes to a close. The bell saving Riddick Bo from further punishment. And here's where Bo hurts him, right in there. <clears throat> that left followed by that short right, the right behind his head. Riddick Bo is hurt. Evander Holyfield took his time before he carried the fight to Bo, hoping that Bo would spend himself chasing Holyfield. Instead of going at him early this way, he has waited. And right now, he is on top in this fight. Evander Holyfield trying to join Muhammad Ali and Floyd Patterson as two big name fighters in the history of the sport to regain the heavyweight championship after having lost it. Tim Witherspoon accomplished the same thing on paper in the 80s, but few remember that. You gotta be real careful now with a young fella like Riddick Bowie. His corner's gotta be watching this carefully, not only can he lose this fight, but he can get his career destroyed if he loses him properly now. Sometimes there's a towel that you can always throw in if it gets too rough. Because he's not only being whipped, he's being cut bad. The blood, you lose a lot of your strength. Holyfield commanding with the jab. Bo once again starting very slowly in this round. Bo is not starting, Bo is now surviving. There he is, slapping with the right hand again, George. Yeah, he has, he's not, uh, I don't consider him at all polished. He's got power because he's big. But if he had a good straight right hand, Evander Holyfield is easy picking to him at any time. Holyfield is doing something he doesn't know how to do now. That's get aggressive. Well, he's always been aggressive, but he's never been a great finisher. Yeah, but he goes forward and he just hit, hit a lot of himself. Boom! Great combination by Holyfield. And another one. Bo standing still at center ring and taking it. That right hand landed flush for Holyfield. The way to keep your respect, Holyfield should be concentrating on it because if he continues to deliver accurate shots to Riddick Bow and doesn't drop him, Riddick Bow can lose total respect and start to jump back on him real good. And Bo looked to the corner to try to gain some advice from Eddie Futch, and Futch was nowhere for him to see him. Hidden behind other figures over here. Holyfield banging away. Round six, a huge one for the former champion. Then the Holyfield should continue to keep his respect for Riddick Bow because a big man like that catcher you with one of those roundhouses, you're going to hit the floor. Like Lennox Lewis did to Frank Bruno when he was in so much trouble in Cardiff, Wales. Seeing that Holyfield has got no defense for an uppercut, I don't know why Bow is not throwing it. Riddick Bow ridiculed Lewis for all the difficulty he suffered Great. at the hands of Frank Bruno. That's true. Now he's getting a lot of the same from Holyfield, but that right hand may have turned things it, around, George. It was a good pinpoint accurate right hand. If he continues to do that, he won't have a hard night because the Holyfield goes forward. He doesn't know what he's doing. Spectacular uppercut by Evander. Last 10 seconds of round number six. We're almost at the midway point of the fight. And what a battle it's been, particularly for Evander Holyfield. The <laughs> okay. I got it. You got that there? Harold, wait a minute. How do you have 
the score, the Larry, fight scored so far. Larry M still got Riddick Bo on top, four rounds to two. Uh, 58 56 in the points. I thought Riddick Bo was very, very busy in the first four rounds. One and on clean punching and effective aggressiveness. Certainly in round five, Evander Holofield turned the fight around completely. He's coming back. He's on top now. Uh, he seems to have taken control of the fight, and he certainly is banging Riddick Bo around in the last two rounds. I think there's going to be a tremendous controversy over the referee because Mills didn't get in quick enough at the end of the fourth round. Controversy or not, Harold, you and I couldn't disagree more. I have a Vanna Holyfield ahead four rounds to one and one even. I see it like that myself. <laughs> but then I never could have been a good judge. <laughs> but Riddick Bowie has tasted all of the power Evander Holyfield has now. He's not scared. He realizes that his corner cannot help him. You look, you're a big boy. You got to fight your way out of this. And he's, he's willing to do it. Bo's going back to sticking the jab, and when he does, he backs Evander up. It was that way last year, it's that way again. Right hand for Holyfield, stuns Bo, and Bo comes back fighting this time, and lands a right hand on Holyfield's chin. Holyfield isn't being smart, he, hands, he hits a good right hand, he hits him with a good right hand, and he stands there and waits to see what he's gonna do. You gotta hit and move out of the way if you wanna win that kind of style, with that style. Bo taking command right now with the jab. Someone is telling. And somebody in a parachute has just landed on the edge of the ring, has been pulled away by security guards. The fight has been brought to a halt. There's a massive melee at ringside as this fellow with a motorized parachute has landed right on top of spectators and officials at ringside. He's in the midst of a mass of security guards now. Rock Newman, Riddick Bowe's manager, was right there. This is a monumental disaster. Right now, police are filing by me at ringside and grabbing this gentleman who has created a monstrosity of an interruption in the bout. His parachute has caught itself up on a row of ring lights. Now we're gonna take a look at an earlier shot of the parachutist before he came down. There he was on the left of the ring. And let's see what happened as he approached ringside. see there and his body landed on the ring apron right on top of a variety of people well this is the most bizarre thing i've ever seen at a price fight and i've seen a few the things bizarre so things. dangerous about this it wasn't only a parachute he's got some motorized exactly on it, it's a they heavy up a lot of people it's a heavy capsule under that parachute with a motorized attachment there could have been a propeller there for all we know george and if nobody has been hurt it will be a near miracle I've seen blood on one hand out there. Rock this Newman, Bo's manager, went nuts. It could be the best thing to happen to Riddick Bo if there's a 10 or 20 minute delay, as now seems You're possible. Right. It may be an angel out of the sky. You see Bo covering Riddick, up to stay warm for Riddick Bo. Well, they're going to work on his cuts right now. Just when you think you've seen everything, <laughs> you know you haven't, and there'll be more crazy stuff to follow. And it was already a bizarre night as the result of the fighting that went past the bell for about 10 seconds at the end of round four. Here's what was happening in the ring at the time that the parachutist landed. You'll see, there he is, entering at the left side. And you see people backing away and trying to avoid the capsule and the motorized contraption attached to it. Here's a look at him much, much earlier this evening from our blimp coverage. As this took place, we are told that our blimp cameraman tried to alert us to the possibility that this was going to happen. That's why he was zooming in and out, as you can see here. And there it is. He targeted the ring and came right down. 
Well, this guy is going to wind up in the slammer in Vegas tonight, and with doggone good reason. Well, what what charges, I wonder? Well, I, what charges? Yeah. <laughs> Doing an outrageous thing to get some publicity for himself. Oh, okay. <laughs> Lighting company turning off lights now to try to prevent the possibility of fire. If Evander Holyfield is thinking about this at all, he has to rue the fact that it happened at a time when he was in such good position in the fight, or so it seemed. And here's another look, guys. We're going to see it one more time. This was incredibly dangerous. I've got to say that it's put a jolt through us because he landed about seven or eight feet away from us on the ring apron. And this is how he descended toward the small disaster which has now taken place at ringside in round seven of a heavyweight championship fight. You can see how our cameraman zoomed in and out attempting to warn our production people in the truck of the possibility this would happen. And I have just gotten word that Riddick Bowe's wife has just fainted at ringside. She was even closer to the parachutist than we are. She's up and around now, but she's awful shaken. And shaken. she is, gentlemen, she's in the early stages of her fourth pregnancy as Riddick looks forward to the birth of his fourth child. And we only hope that Judy will be okay. As round seven resumes, one minute, 50 seconds remain in the round. Gentlemen, I thought that Riddick Bowe was showing signs of fatigue before. I have to assume that this is going to help him. What do you think, George? I think so. The rest always benefit the, the big the punches. Like Reggie Jackson, you swing out, you take a rest, come back the next inning and get another home run. But, but for the boxer, he gets into a groove, and he has to find that groove all over again. So it can be devastating for a boxer to get such a rest. You'll also note that there is no trickle of blood from Riddick Bowe's nose or his eye. For the, the moment, those cuts have been closed. And the cold weather assists that. Once you start, it's hard to bleed in the cold weather. And here comes Holyfield with some of the same mustard he brought before. You notice he more, Holyfield is more effective when he doesn't put any power on the punches. Just let the punches flow. He's able to get out of the way easier, easier. You say, George, he's a more natural punch thrower than Bo. He is. The combination comes so easily with him. Bo has to wind up, straight, strut, and then throw one, two, and look for the guy. If Holyfield could get in his mind when he's hit by Riddick Bo, Listen, it hurts, so get out of the way. For some reason, he convinced himself, oh, that didn't hurt. As they finish out round seven, up to now, Holyfield has looked much the sharper of the two. And the combinations are coming real easy now. Like you're moving in and out, okay? Everything off of your bounce. You're looking good. Good fight. And we haven't even opened up yet. Eight Keep rounds. using those great legs and keep your balance. You're in perfect position tonight. Eight Everything rounds. you're doing, you're never losing your balance, and that's the key to the fight. And when you exchange, put your head in his chest. Okay. okay. Do that jab as soon as you get within range. Fellas, so that that may go down is the most unusual round in the history of boxing. I can't think of anything like that ever having happened, especially in a major prize fight, a heavyweight championship. So a further test of the resiliency of both fighters. Riddick both seems so wiped out at this point. He had a good rest, and he still can't seem to get up and throw three punches. His legs are tight. Well, he didn't have time to do any more training and lose any more weight during that period of time, George. He's still the same 246-pound guy, and you say not as good a fighter as a year ago. That's right. You know, Dick, he, Dick Gregory was surely an asset to his camp last time around. Dick Hard Gregory left to Holyfield. Holyfield can make a, a, a 
Bad mistake trying to slug with this big guy. The big guy's only got one chance now, and that's to land some hard shots. Why give him that opportunity? Well, I'm not so sure you're correct, George, because remember, Harold Letterman, after six rounds, had bow ahead four rounds to two. Yeah, but I, I see, and this crowd sense that Holyfield's got this fight in his hand. Now, of course, we're not judges. And, and we've never fathomed Vegas judges 100%, have yeah. we? Yeah. <laughs> Hard right hand inside by both to the side of Holyfield's head. Backed him up for a second. Riddick tries to land another one, but misses. You see, you can take an easy ride when you get close to Riddick Bowe because he slaps, he slaps with his right hand. Get in and rest and then get out. Now, this is a mistake for Holyfield. When you hit that big man, believe me, he's going to pay you back. Hit him, get out of the way. Don't sit and assess your damage. But this time in close, it was Holyfield who landed the uppercut. Now Bo tries an uppercut there, and it was blocked by Holyfield's glove. The one thing when you're fighting the younger fighters, you can be assured once you hit them hard, they're going to try and pay you back. So you hit them and then move out of the way because they're coming back. Good left to the body by Holyfield as they fight in the clinch. Blood trickling again from above the left eye of Riddick Bo. And now all down his nose and bound to affect the vision in the left eye, and Holyfield takes advantage with the right hand. You should not try to go for the knockout. Just get the same punches without all of the extra effort. It's not going to hurt anymore if he leans in with all his power or if he doesn't. So just do the punches and get out of the way. George, Holyfield. do you think blood on your opponent helps you win a decision? Uh, not at all. You don't think it affects the judges? No, Larry Holmes put blood on Evander Holyfield and they'll fight, and the judges didn't even pay any attention to it. Right hand over the top by Holyfield. Beating Riddick Bowe to the punch right now. He's no doubt outboxing Riddick Bowe, but he should stay away from the slugfest. Another left-right combination by Evander. And three more shots. And Bowe comes back with a hard right. And again, they fight beyond the bell. And Evander Holyfield is starting to dominate this fight. fell in love with Holyfield last time because of the courage he showed in defeat, his first defeat. Here tonight, they're beginning to fall in love with him because of the courage and the skill he is showing in trying to recapture his title. An unmarked Evander Holyfield. Two cuts on Riddick Bow, one above the left eye and one above the bridge of the nose. As they begin round number nine two-thirds of the way through the fight punches in round eight Bo landing more Holyfield a higher percentage both men punching accurately Riddick Bo is getting kind of desperate with that right hand now he needs to set it up with the jab He's gotta set it up behind a jab and it can be it can happen real easily if he only believed in it a hard right hand and Holyfield wobbles. Can Bo follow it up? No, Holyfield is on the move, man. He's been on the move pretty good in the night. And once the big guys land two good shots, they get tired and they got to suck in some air. Crowd gets excited for Bo a little bit as he presses Holyfield against the ropes, but Evander seems fully recovered from that one big right hand shot. Now, Evander should jump right back on the big guy when he throws four shots like that because he doesn't have any oxygen afterwards. It's called get right back. Bo's jab is good now if he can only continue. He's coming behind the jab. He could come back in this fight if he keeps throwing the jab like that for That's the last it. four rounds. There it sets up the right hand again. Easily. And there again.
Holyfield should just forget trying to slug it out with this guy, hurt him, and get it out of the way. Holyfield staying in, becoming a target. Bow's starting to heat up. Now Riddick loses a little steam and paws with the jab instead of sticking it hard as he did earlier in the round. Holyfield has tended to dominate the last minutes of the round as Bo has run out of gas and Holyfield's superior conditioning has shown up. And at this point, we're starting to see Vander Holyfield's left hook to the body, which we hadn't seen early. Bo is trying to counteract by going below the belt. This time, Holyfield doesn't ask the referee for help as he did the first time. Solid right hand inside by Bo. Holyfield, Holyfield leaned into it. Holyfield actually landed the right hand first that time. Another right hand. Left-right combination. Bo misses with the uppercut. But why Holyfield leans in after he lands that right hand, I don't know. Throws the right hand and falls right into Bo. Double left hook by Bo, maybe the first time in the fight. Holyfield comes back with two left hooks of his own. And an uppercut. And another flurry to end the round by Evander Holyfield. And again, Lane has to keep him apart. That was a champion's round by Bo. He's trying to reassert himself. Come on, we gotta go from you. Okay, we're going now. Harold, how do you have to fight now? Larry, I've got an 86-85 Riddick Bow, five rounds to four. I thought Riddick Bow pulled out the the, uh, the last round, the ninth round at the very end. Uh, I just think it's a very, very close fight. Certainly, I thought that Evander Holyfield won rounds five through eight. I have Holyfield well ahead, six rounds to two, one even. Well, that's the most dramatic disparity we've had in a while in HBO scoring, that's for sure. <laughs> Push him around, rub him up. You hear that? Rub him up with him, Bo. Rub him up. Eddie Futch telling Riddick Bo, rip him around, rough him up. He wants Bo to try to get Holyfield to brawl again. In fighting, where Bo may have the advantage. Why Holyfield lays in there with that big man it was a great mistake. The only thing he knows how to do, George. It isn't necessary at all. You get your shots and run away. Warriors heart, Warriors mentality. We're into the 10th round, and of course, you can't forget what happened in the 10th round a year ago when the two men fought a pitched battle with a seesaw momentum. First Bo dominating and seeming on the verge of a knockout, then Holyfield coming back. Once again, 51 weeks later, they are trading leather in the tent. Holyfield is doing so good when he lands two or three jab, move out of the way, go back and do it again. Right now, hand by Holyfield. He falls forward. He shouldn't fall forward once he does it. Clean jab, snapping Bo's head back. Holyfield much the sharper puncher so far in round 10. Bo landed a right inside. You better be careful. Bo is trying to use every dirty trick in the book, hidden below the belt, hidden on the break, waiting for the bell to land another shot. Holyfield is interested in holding a little bit these days. Buying time. Yeah, he shouldn't try to stay in close with the big guy because his legs aren't strong enough to keep pushing that weight off like that. Holyfield Although he's got muscles. Him. Yep. Trading and trading. Step back and get back to You get the feeling that Bo, if he ever throws a two good right, straight right hands, he can end this fight. Why Holyfield mixes it up. George Evander's got a pretty good chin. You didn't get him down. Amen to that. <laughs> Round 10, a bit of a lull now. Right hand by Holyfield inside, rocked Bo back. 
but he shouldn't try to go for the knockout. Just land the shot, be content, and start all over again. He gives Bo a chance to come back with an uppercut of his own. Holyfield leaning forward against the major power of Riddick Bo. That uppercut and knocking Bo's mouthpiece out with a left hook. Another tremendous rally by former champion Evander Holyfield. And gentlemen, that was a tenth round. senses that he has the fight in his hands and that the champion is on the defensive and he's going at him he's not going to give him a chance at a distance he feels comfortable inside now George we just saw the mouthpiece flying out and once again that is a kind of symbol of what's been happening in this fight what a tremendous effort by Holyfield what a test for Bo as champion coming up in these next six minutes. You would think it was Handel's Messiah here a month and a half before Christmas as the crowd chants, holy, 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 and Holyfield delivers another right hand. Riddick Bo has been doing a lot of bashing on Holyfield, talking about him, saying cruel things, and you'd be surprised the public just doesn't like that all the time. To say nothing of Holyfield. Holyfield marshaled his anger. He never went back at Bo in those news conferences when Riddick called him a jughead and a gargoyle. He saved his ammunition for tonight. Evander's saving everything for counter right hands. And he's moving good. When they fought last, his feet were more stable. He didn't bounce around like this in the 10th, 11th round. Left hook inside by Holyfield. He stands in front of Bo, but Bo seems not to have the ammunition to go after the target right now. Now, Riddick Bo's corner told him when they get Evander Holyfield against the rope, go for it. And he, this is the first time he's tried it. George, do you think after all these rounds and all the shots that Bo has taken that he still has the strength to knock out Evander Holyfield? I do believe. You remember, you talk about how polished he is, but he hasn't landed that good polished right hand that he has. And if he gets it, he can win this thing. I think Evander Holyfield has taken the polish off him. Holyfield winning most of the exchanges at close range against a guy regarded as a terrific infighter. Bo not quick enough tonight. Now looking more and more hesitant as he tries to find the target with time running out. Bo is a desperate man. You just don't fool around with desperate guys like this. There's that right hand just inches away from being on the target by Riddick Bowen. Riddick Bowe promised his followers a knockout in this fight. Now he is fighting to survive, or so it would seem. Rapidly coming to a close. And surely Evander Holyfield believes in it. Why is that kind of right hand? Evander Holyfield has been waiting for that right hand all night. It's the same one that dropped Buster Douglas. It hit him, it didn't hurt him, but it got him with it. Ten seconds to go in the 11th. He got him again. Got him again. This right hand shots by Holyfield. Surely he believes in his heart. Regardless of what's on those judges' scorecards, that he's three minutes away from taking his title back. He was up a little too straight. That's how uh -huh. I get him with those, those shots. You gotta, you gotta get down low. Okay. You gotta have this round. You need this round. Here we see Evander Holyfield. Given a second chance, 
and making the most of it. Conventional wisdom that Evander Holyfield no longer had the fire to fire back like this against a big young champion. see the fight quickly. Larry, a little bit closer than you. 105, 104, six rounds to five of Ander Holyfield. But for the first time all night, our Harold Letterman now has Holyfield in the lead. Larry's had him winning the fight all along. In 1959, Ingemar Johansson knocked out Floyd Patterson and took away his heavyweight championship. A year later, Patterson, with one dramatic left hook, took the title back and became the first heavyweight champion ever to regain the championship. Muhammad Ali lost the title and got it back against George Foreman in 1974. Lost it to Leon Spinks and took it back from Spinks in the rematch. In the alphabet morass of the mid-80s in the heavyweight division, Tim Witherspoon accomplished the same feat with one of the three titles. Now Evander Holyfield tries to join Witherspoon, Ali, and Patterson as the only four men ever to lose and then regain the heavyweight championship of the world. I think a lot rests on this round. Holyfield shouldn't try to cruise through it. He loses this round, he could lose his chance to become part of history. George, he's never cruised through a round in his life. He just hit Bo with the biggest right hand of the night, and Riddick came back with one of his own. Yeah, he tried to cruise a little bit. He better try to win this fight and not try to cruise. Regardless of the outcome, are these two men matched for exciting fights or what? This is exciting. Holyfield waiting for that good right hand. He doesn't understand. You can lose a fight waiting. Bo lands an uppercut. An exhausted Holyfield loses his mouthpiece. The mouthpiece at center ring. Bo comes back with the uppercut, trying to hurt Evander while he has his mouthpiece out. Bill Lane tosses the mouthpiece to Emmanuel Stewart in the corner. Holyfield, Holyfield is hurt. He's hurt. You're right, George. Riddick's got a huge chance here and he's going at it with everything he's got. He wins this round. I can not see the judges not going for him. And now Lane decides that it's time for Holyfield to get the mouthpiece back. So Riddick Bowe had a chance there for about 20 seconds to do serious damage. Couldn't quite take full advantage of it. Holyfield's mistake, he waited around for one good right counter right hand and he lost that round. Right hand by Holyfield. Stops Bo in his tracks. Both fighters looking as though they'd like to have a knockout. Crowd rises to its feet. For the second year in a row, they fought the fight of the year. than Evander Holyfield? I think not. Holyfield has proven beyond a doubt that he's the bigger in the heart. That right hand that he waited too long for, he couldn't finally connect it. A tremendous finish to a tremendous fight. It was a fight, a thing that neither guy really wanted to end. They kept fighting after the bell was. Good right hand again. Right. 
Cole was waiting, throwing shots. And now, with the crowd still wobbly and shaking off the effects from that stunning event when the parachutist landed on the apron, with the two fighters reeling from the battle in which four times they continued hitting each other after the bell. With Judy Bowe at a hospital and Riddick Bowe uncertain as to her condition, <laughs> these two fighters wait for the judge's verdict in a heavyweight title bout. Harold Letterman, our unofficial score. How did you have it? Jim, I had it 6-6. Six to 114-114. Six, I got it a draw. I thought that Riddick Bowe definitely pulled out the last round to pull out a draw in a fight. Very, very close. And here's the official decision. Cards. Chuck Jamba scores the bout. 114. 114, he has it even. Patricia Jarman scores the bout. 115 to 114. Jerry Roth scores it. 115 to 113 for the winner by majority decision. And once again, heavyweight champion of the world from Atlanta, Georgia. Moments after the decision, Larry Merchant had the chance to speak with both the returning champion and the deposed one. Evanda, congratulations. You tell me in your words the difference in Evanda Holyfield for this fight and the last fight. Uh, first of all, you know, I, I'd like to thank God uh, for giving me the courage and giving me an opportunity to, uh, to retract the mistakes that I made in the first fight. And uh, the, the, the difference is that I smarter, I, I, I boxed a smarter fight. You know, it, it took some time for me to slow up with him just to get the respect. Then, you know, I was able to move some. And, you know, and, you know, I still had trouble with the fast jab he had, but but still I was able to counter some of the jab that hit him with right hand to isolate his right hand. When can you sense that this was going to be different, that somehow maybe he was no longer the champion even during the fight? Well, you know, when I, I came out there with that, uh, that, that thought in mind, you know, I walked by faith and not by sight. You know, I promised everybody that I was going to win this. You know, I knew the Lord would give me strength. All I had to do is just have courage to go in there and fight the fight regardless of the circumstances. Because, you know, he shook me up sometimes and stuff that could have, you know, could have got me into just slugging. But, you know, I thank God for me having a sound mind, being able to break out from that slug and go back to boxing. So the fact that you changed paces, boxing him, slugging with him, do you think that in, in some way that that threw him off, unlike the last time where he can anticipate everything you were doing? Well, well yes, you know, uh, you know, what's important is a, a person rhythm. When, when a man All right, Tim. All right, Tim. I'm coming back. I want him again. I want him again. Look ahead, y'all. Y'all see that nose? <laughs> Yeah, you know, the whole thing is that, you know, when a man is in his rhythm, you know, it's just like sprint. Most people might be able to run a long distance because they run in the pace. But if you make him chop it up, then, you know, it, it throws their rhythm. And, you know, he's a big man. To start, to start, to stop and stuff really messed the guy up. So, you know, I, I realized that it get me tired, so I knew it had to make him even tighter. Evander, none of us have ever seen anything like that seventh round. I know you haven't. What exactly did you see when the parachutist almost got into the ring well, you know, I'm telling you, know, when the guy came in with the parachute, I thought somebody was jumping over the rope, getting ready to do something. I'm getting ready to run out the ring myself. <laughs> you know, I, you know, I didn't know what happened. It was coming so fast, and you know, he got hung up on the rope. But you know, I was hoping that he wouldn't punch it. So. You seemed to be gathering momentum at that point, and then there was a long layoff. How did it affect you? How do you think it affected the fight? Well, you know, I, I think it really slowed down the pace. But the whole thing is that I thought I had him tired at the time. He was breathing hard, and I was able to lead off. He wasn't getting off with the jab. You know, he was bleeding a lot. And so, uh, and but what happened is that, you know, when I came back to the corner, I was getting stiff in my back, too. But I was, but I felt that he was getting tired, and I was getting ready to pour it on. Have you ever had a second chance to do something else in your life that you had regretted and corrected anything? Well, well yes, uh, you know, to make the Olympic team. 
I, you know, I lost the Olympic trial and I had to come back and fight Ricky Womack twice to beat him. And, you know, I was determined that, you know, I had to win this thing. What are your plans now as the heavyweight champion? Who do you want to fight next? Will you give Bo a chance? Do you want to fight Lennox Lewis? What, are you, what is your outlook on the championship now, having it a second time? Well, you know, my outlook now is to get home and get to church, and you know, and be able to thank the Lord before all the people. Let everybody know that, you know, it's not I, it's that Jesus that gave me the faith and the confidence to be the champion of the world again. Thank you very much, Amanda. Thank you. Riddick, you explained to us the difference between the first fight and the second fight, except the fact that you won the first and lost this. Why did you lose this fight? Well, Larry, um, I guess the judges saw different. I felt like the, I, I felt like going into the last round it was close, and I felt like I had to dominate the last round in order to, you know, pull off a decision. And um, I thought I did that, but the um, judges saw otherwise. You weren't as effective through the middle rounds. Did the fact that he stayed away from you quite a bit somehow change the dynamics of the fight? Mm -hmm. Well, perhaps that could put that could put a big factor. As I said earlier, I wasn't going to chase him, and perhaps by me just waiting, uh, he was able to pile up points. I really can't say at this particular point because I haven't seen the tape. But uh, again, I take my hat off to Ivan Holyfield. I wish him all the luck, and perhaps we can do the third time. Perhaps the next one might be greater than Phil in Manila. Were you as prepared for this fight mentally? and physically as you were when you were challenging for the title? Well, I think for this fight, I had to do a lot more interviews and things like that. But again, I'm not one to make excuses. The judges say Van Holyfield won this one. And um, I congratulate him. I hope he does well, you know, with the championship because um, in due time, I'll be back. Tell us about the seventh round. What you saw, when you saw it, and how did it affect you? How did that long delay affect the fight? Well, I got cold somewhat. And uh, I felt like at that point, I, I, I had to, it was in my favor. And by the sixth round being stopped and what have you, I had the opportunity to get to cold and I guess Evander Holyfield took advantage of it and he came out, he was strong. Did you know that your wife, Judy, had fainted at ringside during that time? Yeah, I saw that and I, I kind of, you know, looked back at her and I saw her taking her out. But I'm not gonna say that affected me. Um, I guess part of me wanted to be there for her because you know she is pregnant. And um, I don't want to take anything from my Evander Holyfield. He, he won the fight, as the judges would say. But um, I guess by me seeing that, it kind of distracted me somewhat. All right, it wouldn't be human for it, for you not to be in some way affected, even, if, even as you went back to work. Mm -hmm. Oh, I definitely was affected. But again, I do not want to take anything away from Evander Holyfield. If the judges say he won the night, uh, my hat goes off to him, and I congratulate him. What are your plans now? I shall return. I'm going to shock everybody. Evander knows, uh, I guess maybe I'm in the predicament he was at one point, and uh, I'm just that much uh, determined as he was the last time. So, um, look, I'm just still young, and I'll be back. Thank you very much, Riddick. So let's sum up the events of this landmark evening in the recent history of heavyweight boxing. Evander Holyfield joins Tim Witherspoon, Muhammad Ali, and Floyd Patterson to become only the fourth man in the history of the sport to have lost the heavyweight championship and then won it back in the ring. As for Riddick Bowe, he loses the heavyweight title, and in his 35th fight, he has his first loss. His future changes somewhat. Final punch stat numbers paint a fascinating picture of what happened in the ring. You'll see that in our overall punch stat computations, Bowe is given credit for having thrown more than 250 more punches and landed exactly 100 more than did Holyfield. But when you look at power punches, hooks, crosses, and uppercuts, that tells you a different story. When they stood toe-to-toe, -to -toe, Holyfield landed at an astonishing 53% rate, and that, in the eyes of the judges, was enough for him to win back his heavyweight title. George Foreman, what does this do to Evander Holyfield's place in the history of heavyweight boxing? Well, he's proven that tag now the real deal. He's recaptured the heavyweight title, which is a few heavyweights of a lot of tribe, but few have been able to do. He did it in grand fashion. It wasn't given to him. He won it. And let me tell you, he puts his name right there with Floyd Patterson and... And well, Muhammad Ali, well, let's who forget did it about by that. beating you in October of 1974. But we've got other great memories to treasure tonight, George. One of them, that Holyfield proved he could beat a man who outweighs him by 30 pounds, and a lot of people didn't think that was possible. Larry Merchant, your final thoughts. Well, I have a few things running through my mind right now, Jim. One of them is, who was that nutball who floated into the picture here disturbing a great event? what does get into some people secondly perhaps we're now closer 
to getting a resolution to the split heavyweight championship picture. Evander Holyfield is likely to face Lennox Lewis for perhaps as much as $20 million. Third, Riddick Bowe. I think what Riddick Bowe ought to do is call his architect and get that kitchen out of the bedroom of his new home. And finally, Evander Holyfield. I sit here thinking of the 10th round last year when he was staggering around the ring, semi-conscious it seemed, and afterwards he said to me, that's when I knew I had him. The crowd's going crazy, this big kid is throwing punches at him, and what Evander Holyfield is really thinking is, now I've got him where I want him. Jim, fighters like that, you can count on the fingers of a boxing glove. And boxing gloves don't have many fingers. No, I think there's really mm -hmm. only one, Evander Holyfield. And in a way, it's poetic that we go back now to where we started exactly a year ago. You have a veteran heavyweight champion in Evander Holyfield, a cadre of young contenders headed by Lennox Lewis and Michael Moore, and yes, Riddick Bowe. And whatever happens next in this topsy-turvy heavyweight division, we'll continue to bring it to you on HBO. Some final notes. Judy Bowe, three months pregnant, taken to Valley Hospital in Las Vegas after fainting during the seventh round delay, was released later that night, pregnancy intact, and is now resting comfortably at home in Fort Washington, Maryland. Eddie Futch had heart palpitations during the fight and was taken to the Valley Hospital coronary unit. He was moved to a regular room on Sunday and released from the hospital Monday. He's now resting comfortably and cites the strain of Bowe's training camp for his difficulties. The parachutist, James Miller, now referring to himself as Fan Man, was taken to University Medical Center in Las Vegas and released later that night after having been treated for minor cuts and bruises. He was arrested by Las Vegas Metro Police, charged with dangerous flying, and released Sunday on $200 bail. A court date is set for the end of this month. Two civil suits are planned against Miller, one by Bernard Brooks, a member of Bo's camp who was cut when Miller came crashing down. The other suit is being filed by Spencer Promotions, Rock Newman's company, with the charge of disruption of promotion. Spencer Promotions will also ask the Las Vegas prosecutor's office to file a charge of assault against James Miller. If by chance